common bile duct injury in an emergency. I have nothing to disclose. So the objectives of this talk are to discuss the principles of bile duct injury prevention and safe cholecystectomy and to discuss what to do and what not to do if there is a bile duct injury. So uh, bile duct injury prevention. So it's helpful to review the anatomy of the gallbladder as it relates to the porta hepatis uh, in uh, discussing the principles of uh, safe cholecystectomy and bile duct injury prevention. It is uh, helpful to remember that the uh, gallbladder rests on the cystic plate and the cystic plate is contiguous with the hilar plate. Uh, but most importantly, the uh, cystic plate terminates in the uh, uh, right portal structures. And so in uh, cases of severe inflammation, the uh, uh, cystic plate uh, becomes contracted and therefore the uh, base of the gallbladder can be very close to the right uh, portal structures. Uh, similarly, uh, this is an illustration of the uh, underside of the liver with the infundibulum of the gallbladder retracted uh, superiorly and the uh, fissure uh, in the liver is called the fissure of Gans and this uh, delineates the uh, right posterior portal structures. And if an imaginary line is drawn from the uh, fissure of Gans to the falciform ligament and uh, it this can be a good border below which dissection should not be uh, undertaken and, uh, uh, and it will prevent uh, the surgeon from getting too close to the common bile duct which can be seen below the uh, imaginary line drawn there. Uh, if it's possible, the, uh, a very good way to prevent uh, bile duct injury is to create a critical view of safety. Um, this may not always be possible in, in cases of severe inflammation where the uh, infundibulum in the uh, body of the gallbladder are fused to the uh, porta hepatis, uh, but if the uh, hepatocystic triangle is uh, dissectable, then the principles of the critical view of safety are to clear all tissue from the hepatocystic triangle uh, with lateral retraction of the infundibulum and uh, cephalab retraction of the fundus of the gallbladder such that the body of the gallbladder abutting the cystic plate is visible and two and only two tubular structures are seen uh, entering directly into the gallbladder. And uh, it, then and only then are these structures divided. This is an illustration of the so-called uh, classic uh, common bile duct injury. Uh, it's uh, most often encountered when there's severe inflammation uh, in the hepatocystic triangle uh, such that it's obliterated and the surgeon undertakes uh, dissection uh, which is actually medial to the common bile duct which is then retracted laterally and uh, is seen enter entering directly into the gallbladder and so the, it's uh, deceptive uh, but it appears that it's just it's the cystic duct and, and thus the uh, uh, common bile duct is divided distally and then when the uh, uh, bile duct is divided there's noted to be another structure which is usually divided and that structure is the common hepatic duct and so typically there's a segmental loss of bile duct in, uh, in situations with a bile duct injury. <clears throat> in uh, 2018 uh, uh, an expert consensus uh, guideline was released from Tokyo uh, uh, with management guidelines for acute cholecystitis, but also with a specific goal of reducing uh, th the incidence of bile duct injuries. And so their recommendations of when to uh, uh, bail out uh, include uh, diffuse scarring in uh, Colo's triangle. Uh, if there's an impacted stone at the confluence of the cystic uh, duct, the common bile duct, and the common hepatic duct, if there is a cholecysto, uh, cholidoco fistula, also known as Maritzi syndrome, or if there's a cholecystoenteric fistula, either cholecystocolonic or cholecystoduodenal. Uh, in these, <coughs> in these uh, circumstances, uh, there are several uh, 
very reasonable and safe bailout options, and these include uh, placing an operative uh, cholecystostomy tube, uh, performing an open cholecystectomy, uh, if the surgeon is comfortable with these techniques, uh, performing a, a fenestrated cholecystectomy, a subtotal cholecystectomy. Uh, either way, the principle uh, underlying uh, these uh, approaches is drainage and source control while uh, minimizing uh, bile duct injury risk. This is an illustration of a fenestrated cholecystectomy. Essentially, the principle is that to remove the as much of the anterior wall of the gallbladder as is, as is possible and removing all stones. And then if the cystic duct uh, orifice can be identified, it can be oversown. Uh, the idea is that the safest place to be is within the gallbladder. And, um, and this is also the... the it, essentially the same thing as a subtotal cholecystectomy, but you remove as much of the gallbladder as you can uh, while minimizing the risk of a bile duct injury. And now uh, we'll talk about the management uh, of a common bile duct injury. So the principles, if once you encounter uh, or think you have a bile duct injury, uh, first and foremost, that it would be to minimize further dissection, um, leave a drain, and then transfer to a center with the hepatobiliary expertise. Most of the time when um, uh, a bile duct injury is suspected, you have an inflamed field where um, you have bile leaking from somewhere and you can't really tell where. And so uh, it is uh, under these circumstances that these principles uh, apply most readily. So first, uh, minimize further dissection, and the reason this is recommended is it avoids making the bile duct injury worse, uh, it avoids further devascularization of the bile duct, and it also avoids uh, major vascular injury. This is a schema that sort of shows the various uh, uh, anatomic uh, presentations of uh, bile duct injuries. And uh, many of these can be managed with uh, non-operative techniques. And so uh, frequently in an, in an inflamed field, it's difficult to tell where the, the bile leak is coming from. And, and so further dissection could, could potentially make the bile duct injury worse, which uh, changes the uh, long-term uh, morbidity and, and outcome for the patient. Uh, another uh, reason to minimize further dissection is the uh, blood supply to the uh, bile duct is uh, relatively tenuous and uh, arises from the uh, primarily from the right hepatic artery and uh, in situations where there is a bile duct injury the bile duct has usually uh, been somewhat devascularized and so further dissection could potentially further uh, uh, devascularize the bile duct which again changes the long-term uh, morbidity and outcome for the patient. And then uh, the other uh, consideration is that uh, typically the uh, space between the gallbladder and the bile duct is, has been uh, obliterated because of chronic and acute inflammation and the right hepatic artery and right portal vein are in very close proximity in these situations. And so uh, a major vascular injury can also be avoided. So uh, the, uh, the other principles uh, uh, underlying ma management of a common, bi a common bile duct injury include wide drainage. And the idea here is to create a controlled biliary fistula, which is uh, uh, much less morbid and much preferable to a worsened uh, bile duct injury or uh, a major vascular injury. And then uh, transfer the patient to a center with hepatobiliary expertise. So. Uh, uh, and the reason uh, behind this is that uh, frequently these uh, injuries are managed uh, with a multidisciplinary approach. And, uh, and, and so the, what is meant by a center with hepatobiliary expertise is the patient will have access to adva advanced uh, gastroenterologists, uh, interventional radiologists, and uh, hepatobiliary surgeons. So in conclusion, uh, 
when, gall, uh, when severe gallbladder inflammation is encountered, uh, less is more. Avoid further dissection when a bile duct injury is encountered. A controlled biliary fistula is, is less morbid than a worsened bile duct injury or major vascular injury. And finally, uh, management of bile duct injuries requires a multi multidisciplinary approach uh, that includes uh, gastroenterologists, radiologists, and surgeons.